The meeting of the Scarborough Planning Board, dated December 12th, 2022, will come to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Doreen, you please do the roll call. Rachel Henriksen. Here. Roger Bealey. Here. Jennifer Ladd. Here. Rick Meinking. Here. Next item on the agenda. Uh, by the way, we do have a quorum. Uh, next item on the agenda is the minutes for November 21st, 2022. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. There are any changes, additions, corrections? Hearing none, please call the roll. Rachel Henriksen? Yes. Roger Bealey? Yes. Jennifer Ladd? Yes. Rich Mine King? Yes. Thank you. Item number five. And uh, for the information of the public, item number nine has been tabled at the request of the applicant. Number five, the planning board will conduct a public hearing to receive comment on proposed amendments to the town of Scarborough zoning ordinance. The proposal would amend section 11 off street parking regulations to add subsection L to prepare for installation of and or install electric vehicle infrastructure in new development and redevelopment. This is a public hearing. So I ask the there is anyone in the room who is here to make a comment to please go up to the podium, state your name and your address, and you have three minutes for comment. Since there's nobody stampeding to the microphone, do we have anyone online? All right, thank you. Declare public comment period over, but I do ask for comments from the planning board. Uh, there any members of the planning board that would like to make comments? May I? Yes, you may. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure my colleagues can read as well as I can. Well, maybe even better. Um, but just to give a big, big picture, uh, what what this is it, trying to accomplish is. Um, adding uh, EV charger infrastructure uh, within the ordinance of the parking ordinance. Uh, we're not changing any of the number of parking spots or anything like that. What this does is it takes the existing requirements of the ordinance and then establishes a percentage of those parking spots that are need to be, uh, you know, have some sort of EV infrastructure. And it doesn't necessarily mean a charger. It just means the ability to get power there, or in some cases it will be, you are required to put a charger on. Uh, but what it really is trying to do is answer the, or, or create a uh, mechanism that will enable uh, Scarborough to begin to build out in the infrastructure for EV, supporting EVs. Uh, we're particularly, sustainability committee worked on this for a number of months now as uh, a few people can attest to. Um, and what we're really trying to do is get this infrastructure going, primarily uh, with single family homes and multifamily homes. The requirements are rather um, important uh, because charging uh, is done mostly at night and at folks' uh, primary residence. And so if you looked at that ordinance, that's why it's the 100% um, requirement on those aspects. And then you look at some of the other building uses like hotels and everything like that. We've tried to think, uh, the sustainability committee tried to create a way in which it made sense in certain entities or certain building types to have different levels of infrastructure uh, that would support uh, the EVs. So, um, uh, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. If you had a question about the ordinance, uh, I know a, um, Autumn's been uh, in part of those discussions. 
we held a stakeholder uh, meeting where we had developers um, in the room talking to us about what their thoughts were. And um, we've fine-tuned the percentages uh, based on their input. And, and so I think what we have here is something that uh, fits nicely into um, the ordinance and is, is the right, uh, right mix. And um, well, I would encourage you to uh, take a look at it and support moving forward. Thank you. Uh, let me ask Autumn, do you have any su suggestions or changes? I know you've been instrumental in getting this to us. Oh, thank you. Um, I do have one change that I think based on additional conversations to recommend striking section 5.4 charging and parking. It is just for clarification because it says EVCS parking spaces were provided for public use are reserved for parking and charging electric vehicles only. I do not think that the town has any capabilities or intention to enforce that. So we just thought we would strike it to make it very clear. So you can still use these for your overall parking requirements, but if we strike that, then there's no enforcement. That, yes. Yes. that yes. was it. Thank you. Anybody else on the board? I have a question for Rick, if I may. Sure. Um, you made the comment that um, when you talk about infrastructure, I'm assuming you're talking about like conduit going to a, a particular location yeah. where a charging station can be installed, set up. But you did say that sometimes a charging station will be required. Yes. What, what would be those? Well, it's it's laid out here in the in the ordinance itself. If I think the last page um, describes the three the. Uh, uh, a space is capable, meaning it just has the uh, conduit installed, but lacking any electrical capacity. Then you have the EV system installed, which means you can actually plug a vehicle in. And then ready means the, the source of power is capable to be brought into there via the conduit, and it's ready to go with it. Sorry about that. Don't ask me to repeat what I said, because I've already forgotten it. Uh, but <laughs> um, it's it's ready to go because the building has the power available. And so if you would go through the different uh, building types, you can see that the percentages um, are listed there. So in some cases, for example, um, let's pick, well, for the single family home, we're saying that uh, it has to be 100% ready. And that's level two, right? Uh, yes, level two. Okay. Yeah. So, so somebody was going to be building a, um, say, on a garage, uh, putting a garage, you know, building a new garage to uh, to their home. They would have to put in an EV station. Yeah, have, that no, it because wired. it's got to be through a, a site plan. When when they go to do if, do you want to answer that? Sure. It would not be with an addition. It would just be with a new residential permit. Okay. So. But if you basically just make sure the proper wiring is Correct. into wherever they want to plug in their vehicle. Right. Okay. Yeah. But, but it doesn't mean it has to go in a garage. If you build a brand new house uh, in, a in a development and you don't put a garage in, you will still re be required to have it able to be EV capable. So you'd have to have a piece of conduit that runs down to the power supply, but that's it. You don't have to have the charger installed. You don't even have to run the wire. Okay, but so if um, if there was a, for instance, a retail store or this like a health club. Yeah, health club. 5%. 5% of those have to have uh, EV chargers installed. 5% of the parking spaces. Correct. Okay, all right. That's the requirement. All right. Do you, can I, I have a question for, um, I just want to make a comment to Autumn. Yeah. Um, I was very pleased to read your, your memo regarding um, October 14th, the town oh, the shall, pardon me? The parking. Yes, because I've actually raised that a few years ago and unfortunately never gone anywhere because um, it came up after the, um, the restaurant out on, right? Um, like the one um, on the restaurants, one parking space 
for four tables or booth seats. I think that's, that should be two. And um, the same thing for one for every two employees. That's, it's so unlikely employees are gonna share a ride to work, especially working in a restaurant. It just, I think it's so unlikely, you know? So those are two things that I've brought up in the past. So I'm glad to see that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, one comment and that's section 5.2.4 um, that the EVCS uh, the operational during normal business hours. Um, I would suggest that there be something in the language that says the operating hours shall be posted in a prominent position so that people driving by or thinking to stop to um, to charge their cars, see a sign that says, sorry, we're we're closed in effect, or this charging station is only energized during the hours of such and such and such and such. And also there's another place in here, I believe where it's mentioned that there should be uh, commercially, that there should be a, a phone number available if people have difficulty. Um, I would suggest that language be beefed up simply to say something to the effect of displayed in a prominent place so that people aren't digging around in the snow or uh, in back of in the landscaping to find the phone number to get them to get them assistance. So it, it's it's more of a, a design question uh, that's kind of tied to a, a safety, a safety issue. Uh, otherwise, I, I think the committee has done uh, an excellent job with this. Um, we we don't often have brand new ordinances um, basically put together from scratch, uh, and the the committee has done excellent work on this. Thank you. Next item, the planning board shall conduct a public hearing to receive comment on proposed amendments to the Town of Scarborough Site Plan Review Ordinance. The proposal would amend section 2B, activities exempt from site plan review to require site plan review for projects proposing more than one single family or two, sing or two family dwellings on a single lot under unified ownership. So this one came up through this board, the planning board, you may all recall the eight tiny homes that we reviewed under subdivision. However, um, we were really looking into more site plan detail and the applicant complied, uh, but this brought up a topic that right now we don't have site plan requirements for single family on one lot. And so this proposal essentially requires a site plan. So if we have a condo regime or we have single family for rent, which really functions as a multifamily project, but it's all on one lot, we can require a site plan. And so we can have input on the design and the layout and the amenities and so on. Uh, so this, this is that ordinance. Uh, and we did it through the unified ownership. We worked with the town attorney to make the language match some language that we already had in existence. And then the next item is a cleanup that we found uh, that's related. So these two ordinances are really what came out of that discussion with those tiny homes and wanting to see site plans for things like that. So it doesn't affect a, a normal single family lot. It's only if you have more than one building uh, and not an accessory dwelling unit, but more than one single family or two family unit on a, on a lot. Thank you. This item is available for public comment. Is there anyone in the room that would like to comment? Seeing none, is there anyone online? Public comment is over. Let me go to the board. Let's take these separately and look at item number six first. <laughs> On the, uh, the change in chapter 405. There is a single change on that. Um, on, I believe, the back page.
Ms. Autumn said this is really kind of cleanup language based upon what we found, um, the issues we found with Simplicity Court. Yeah, I don't have any problem. No comments. Uh, I believe that this does adequately address the issue in terms of the planning board's responsibility. Next item, the planning board will conduct a public hearing to receive comment on proposed amendments to section 2D9 of the Town of Scarborough Zoning Ordinance. The proposal would add requirements to permit multiple buildings on one lot for multifamily and multiplex uses where permitted. Autumn. Thank you. So this one came up as we were going through the unified ownership. It's not clear, it, while it's implied for multifamily buildings, it's not clear that you can actually have one, more than one multifamily building on a lot. And so we added this language in red on page three of four um, that made that very clear. And so now you can do multifamily units, uh, structures, excuse me, on a single lot. So this is the, the language in the middle, been added. This is an item that also is subject to public hearing. Is there anyone in the room that would like to address this? I see a lot of head shaking going on. To the negative, is there anyone online? No hands. Thank you. This public hearing is over. Does the board have any questions or uh, suggestions or comments? Again, thank you. I think this adequately addresses the issue that we that we came across uh, with the Simplicity Court, and I I think that really cleans up the um, the concerns that raised because of that. Number eight, Taylor Goebel requests subdivision termination of Witten Wood subdivision located at 34 New Road, Assessor's Map R35, Lot 17. Eric. Thank you. So uh, Northeast Civil Solutions and Mr. Goble have been working with the planning department uh, on the termination of Wood subdivision. This property is located off of New Road and was previously approved by the planning board back in 2019. Uh, it created six lots off of New Road, which would have been served by Snowy Owl Lane. Uh, the developer of the subdivision no longer intends to develop it. Uh, and therefore uh, they are in front of the planning board requesting termination uh, of the subdivision. The remaining land currently identified as 34 New Road would remain in possession of the current owner, uh, while the area formerly occupied by the approved six lot subdivision would uh, be conveyed to Mr. Goble. Uh, procedurally, the board needs to review and approve any subdivision termination request, uh, which is formalized by recording of a termination agreement and a separate notification that's signed by the town manager at the Registry of Deeds. Uh, if approved, uh, the board would need to sign the agreement um, and staff's only comment to this point is uh, something we've been working with the applicant on, uh, which is to provide a private way application for uh, the access to the 34 New Road property owned by the Chatmases. Um, this would be such that the uh, Chatmas property can still maintain the required 200 feet of frontage in the rural zone. And with that, I would turn it back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And for the applicant. Thank you, Madam Chairman, uh, members of the board. I'm Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil, mm -hmm. representing uh, the Goebel family this evening. Um, as Eric just surmised, uh, everything is, uh, well, I'll back up here a little bit and say COVID continues to strike. Uh, we got this approved uh, just before COVID hit, basically. And then uh, kind of all bets were off as far as that's concerned over the course of the last couple of years. And then there was an individual um, on behalf of his family who was very interested in buying the entire parcel, but not as a subdivision. So essentially what we're looking at, as Eric just mentioned, is a previously approved subdivision that we just prefer to terminate. And that'll put it back to um, two parcels of land as opposed to one overall. And that's really all there is to it. But I'd be happy to address any questions or, or answer any uh, comments that you might have. This is an item that is subject to public comment. Is there anyone in the room that would like to comment? And another the head shakes again. Is there anyone online? Thank you. Well, the comment is over. I turn this over to the board if they have 
Any questions? Uh, this is, by the way, I, I cannot recall anything like this coming before us. So, uh, to, yeah, to, term, to terminate. Um, I did have a question about why the private way. Eric was very kind to explain to me that the the two portions of the property that would be provide road frontage are separated by several building lots. So in order for the Chapmanses to be able to have a conforming lot, they need the access on the private way. Do you have any questions? Roger? Yeah, uh, I just have a question for uh, Eric. Uh, like uh, Rachel said, um, I don't ever recall anything like this. Is, I find it hard to believe this is the only time something has been, a, a approved plan has been terminated in, in the town. I mean, I've only been here for a year, but this is well, the first. You should research <laughs> this. I, I spoke with, I had to speak with our attorney about this on multiple occasions just to get clarification on the process. And he's been practicing for 20 plus years and says he's only seen it five times. So there must be something about my presence that encourages the, <laughs> I'll take the blame. No more questions, thank you. Um, I am, is a uh, chair, I am retreating required to sign uh, this is this is a first as well I'm required to sign um, an agreement to terminate the subdivision approval um, which will if the motion passes uh, be sent to the applicant upon um, the uh, private way approval um, so saying that I have a draft I have a motion Witten Wood subdivision termination I move to approve the termination of Witten Wood subdivision proposed by Taylor Goebel. Findings, the proposal terminates Witten Wood subdivision as shown in plan sets recorded at the Cumberland County Register, uh, Registry of Deeds in book 219, page 531. Conditions, prior to release of the signed agreement to terminate the subdivision, the applicant shall A, obtain a private way approval for Marlin Lane. Is there a second? Uh, Rick Meinking has seconded. Any questions, comments? Uh, please, Doreen, please call for the vote. Rachel Henriksen? Yes. Roger Bealey? Yes. Jennifer Ladd? Yes. And Rick Meinking? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Okay, who's got a pen? Item number 10, Dunstan Tap and Table requests a master plan amendment of the Dunstan Village Master Plan approved by the Planning Board on August 2015. The amendment includes updating required parking and building footprint as part of the site plan amendment for the restaurant. Eric. Thank you. So uh, as part of a site plan uh, request for uh, a 1,008 square foot addition to Dunstan Tap and Table. Um, we have also uh, sort of split off that request uh, to separately amend the master plan, which was provided by the applicant in their uh, materials. Um, the amendments really essentially update the existing plan, which is currently shown on the, on the screen to show uh, updated parking calculations, as well as uh, the current setup of the parking lot in the site. Um, with the straightforward nature of the proposal, staff has no other comment on the master plan. Thank you. Thank you, and for the applicant. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Sean Frank. I'm a civil engineer with Sebago Technics. Uh, I think we'll probably get into more of the, uh, of the site plan parts, but for the master plan, it really is uh, the enclosure of the existing patio to the rear, or a portion of the existing patio to the rear of the building uh, for, uh, for, from seasonal to uh, full-time seating. Uh, as well as with the opportunity to add 18 parking spaces. So uh, 
Um, with that, it was basically uh, amending the approved master plan to show that 1,008 square foot addition to the back of the existing facility uh, and, the, and the 18 parking spaces as shown on the plan in front of you. Um, and with that, I would conclude my presentation and again, probably just get more into the uh, specifics as part of the site plan review. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's go now to get to the uh, uh, amendment first. Uh, this is subject to public comment. Is there anyone in the room uh, who would like to comment? Hearing none, is there anyone online? Thank you. The public comment period is over. I turn this over to the board. Remember, we are looking at the master plan, which is essentially presented to us as this document showing the changes on the second page. And the changes are the parking spaces uh, and in addition to the back of the building in closing essentially part of the patio. Anyone care to go? I'll just say I'm okay with it. Thank you. Yeah, I don't have anything else. All right, uh, I have nothing. Uh, so in considering that the board has no comments, I have a draft motion, Dunstan Village Master Plan. I move to approve the project titled Master Plan of Dunstan Village, proposed by Dunstan Tap and Table, as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago Technics, dated 11-14-22, with the following findings and conditions. Findings. The project amends the Dunstan Village Master Plan showing as built layout on site, updated parking calculations and building footprint area proposed to be added by Dunstan Tap and Table located at 6 Stewart Drive. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Roger Beely. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, Doreen, will you call the call for the vote? Rachel Hendrickson? Yes. Roger Bealey? Yes. Jennifer Ladd? Yes. And Rick Mindy? Yes. Motion passes. Now we move on to the next item. Number 11, Dunstan Tap and Table rec re requests a site plan amendment review of Dunstan Tap and Table for a 1,008 square foot building addition for seating and restaurant space. The property is further identified as 6 Stewart Drive, Assessors Map U30, Lot 1603. Eric. Thank you. So similarly to the master plan, the Dunstan Tap and Table is requesting a site plan amendment to add a 1,008 foot uh, square foot addition to the rear of the existing restaurant. Uh, it would occupy the area, part of the area currently used for outdoor dining, enclosing a portion of that seating area. Um, part of the proposal includes showing an additional 18 parking spaces at the northwest corner of the site uh, to be built uh, if the full build out of Dunstan Village should ever require additional parking. Um, staff would like to note that uh, the existing parking on the site meets the town's minimum parking requirements. Um, and staff's main comments revolve around proposed lighting and building architecture. Uh, other items to note is that the town has, uh, the applicant and the town have been communicating with DOT to ensure that the uh, additional trip generation as part of this project are within the uh, applicant's approved TMP, uh, which DOT was able to confirm this morning. Uh, however, they've noted further occupancy would require review by the DOT uh, to ensure the uh, offsite improvements along Broad Turn and Route 1 um, would need to be installed um, pending any further occupancy. And with that, I would turn it back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Now, Sean. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Again, Sean Frank with Sebago Technics. Uh, with me tonight are the Brennermans, the owner of a, a tap and table. Um, uh, as you are, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the, uh, with the facility. Uh, basically what occurred during COVID was uh, they worked with the town to allow for uh, additional outdoor seating. As part of that, they uh, constructed, uh, uh, expanded the patio that was out back uh, to provide that outdoor seating. 
Uh, obviously, as things have progressed and, uh, and uh, regulations have kind of eased up, uh, they've been kind of filling that area in so that uh, actually now what we'd like to do is to enclose that patio uh, with this 1,008 square foot uh, addition to the rear of the building. Um, so that basically rather than just seasonal, um, it's going to be year round. Um, from that standpoint, I, I have looked at uh, uh, the staff review comments. Uh, certainly, the five—it's a four thousand six hundred and seventy square foot building, so it's certainly fine in terms of meeting the maximum ten thousand square foot addition uh, or total. Um, the actual building materials and colors will be exactly the same as the existing building. We'll get those on the architectural drawings. Uh, they did. Uh, we did reach out to the uh, to the original builder and, and make sure that, in fact, we know exactly what they're they're utilizing on that. Uh, Notice the drive width on there. We're not proposing to construct drives. I think the drive width waiver was actually part of the original Dumpson Village uh, associated with that. Um, we, there was certainly more than 15% uh, landscaping, uh, snow storage. There's plenty of room for that. We'll just show that on the rear of the parking area. Uh, and we'll reach out to the sewer and water district associated with that. Again, we were looking at this as, as basically encompassing existing seating that is out there, but just looking at it from a strictly permitting standpoint, uh, it was originally permitted for 92 seats back in 2016 and 17, and the total at the end of this day will be 135 seats, uh, including everything, um, outside, inside, in the bar. Um, so that uh, with that, we will make sure, and as Eric stated, we've been working with uh, uh, the town's consultant regarding the uh, the impact fees. Uh, we think we have those updated now, uh, working with DOT in terms of the timing of the offsite improvements and how that impacts this. And as Eric stated, uh, what we are showing are 18 parking spaces uh, that could be constructed along the edge of the existing uh, uh, parking that's out there. Um, uh, the total does meet the requirements of the ordinance, but as we all know, sometimes uh, uh, where you park, because it's, it's pretty much all uh, shared parking out here, um, but our anticipation is especially as the full build out, as you recall, uh, uh, Mr. Chamberlain is currently constructing a, a building right across the street from this one. Uh, there are three more that are still allowed to be permitted and constructed out on this facility, uh, all basically right along the Route 1 frontage. And uh, our concern is, or certainly the applicant's concern is, is at that point in time, as this gets built out, um, that certainly that uh, proximity parking, if you will, uh, would be uh, uh, very needed for uh, for the for the uh, viability of the restaurant. Uh, we looked at the uh, the drainage, which goes into uh, existing catch basins and into existing uh, wet pond that's already been constructed out here, uh, which has adequate capacity uh, uh, for the stormwater. Uh, we are aware of uh, of the staff comments. We see them as relatively straightforward, uh, and would certainly request a, a conditional approval from the planning board tonight, if appropriate, Madam Chair. And with that, between myself and the Brennamans, we'll certainly do our best to answer any questions that you folks have. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is also an item that is available for public comment. Is there anyone in the room who would like to comment? Hearing none, is there anyone online? Thank you. Public comment is over. I will turn this over to the board for questions and comments. Who would like to go first? Uh, I Just a clarifying question. You, um, the intent is to not build out the additional parking until it is needed. Is that right? Yes. Our anticipation is probably towards uh, the full build out of the village itself. Like I say, there's three more buildings that need to be constructed out there. So not in conjunction with the addition, but we're, we're permitting it at the same time. That's, that's our intent. So that just so that we don't have to come back to this board. In fact, when we add, want to add those parking spaces, uh, our anticipation is that we'll be build this addition uh, this spring. Um, and like I say, just certainly want to have those parking spaces available, which uh, I, again, when will those other buildings be constructed? We really don't know at this point in time, but like I say, we certainly like to have the flexibility to be able to go in there and build those on an as needed basis. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. Um, that's the only question. I have. Thank you. Anyone else? Rick? Um, yeah, just, um, on the, on the lighting there, it, um, we should get that on the photometrics plan where those new parking spots would go and what you know what level of lights they will be at 
uh, if you can just work that in. You may not even have to change the fixture itself, but maybe just a reflector inside to make sure that you get the, the coverage you need, but it should be on your lighting plan. I, I appreciate that. And that was one of the staff comments and certainly we will just ask Swain to update their photometrics associated with Okay, that. thank you. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you, Roger. Roger's all set. Um, I've got some questions. I, I must admit to a certain amount of confusion when I looked at this. Um, I wasn't clear whether it was going to be year round or three season. Uh, the because int the intent is to make the seating year round. The whole idea is to get it inside. Uh, okay. I, as I looked at it, I wasn't clear where the heating was coming from. Uh, everything's going to be extended from the interior of the existing building. So in terms of any electrical service or uh, the sprinkler service or, uh, or the heating, it's all going to be just extended from the existing building. Okay. Uh, as I looked at the architectural plans, uh, I noticed that the windows on the, um, on the proposed addition were different from the windows on the rest of the uh, building. And we do ask for congruent uh, architecture. So we would need something different. As we order the windows. <laughs> so I gather the applicant agrees to make the windows congruent throughout yeah, the it, year. It would, it would appear that the applicant would agree to make the uh, windows congruent with the existing building. Thank you. Yeah. And I assume that means the colors as well. Yes. And the colors, like I say, the intent always was for the colors to, to match the existing building. Okay. Um, I did not see the plans, although I, I could see from the architectural drawings that um, there's going to be a, I believe, an overhead glass overhead door leading out to the patio. Yes, it will be. Yes. Okay. We you usually like to see, you know, how that's done. Oh, that wasn't about part of the elevations that you received. It was part of the elevations without any additional information on it that I could find. Uh, on the other hand, when I'm looking at two point type, I the font, I have a little difficulty. I, I, I will get some, uh, and I, if again, part of the staff review was to uh, obtain some additional uh, information along those architecturals and certainly we will get that additional information added to okay. that. Okay. Um, is there anything else uh, that you want to discuss on the, uh, the comments from the, the staff? Uh, I was all set with them, Madam Chair. I tried to at least go quickly through a, a number of them. Uh, again, uh, I think we pretty well have provided something for uh, the traffic consultant. Uh, I think uh, the engineering review is basically uh, uh, add sizes of, uh, of landscaping. And uh, like I said, I did try to go through quickly in terms of the uh, uh, the comments from staff. And I guess our bottom line is we have no issues with the comments if the board hasn't. And if appropriate, we certainly appreciate a conditional approval to address those comments to staff satisfaction. Uh, let me confer with the staff for a moment. We always have problems with handwriting. <laughs> I can't help you with that one. <laughs> If the staff, if the board has no longer has any questions, I have. Um, excuse me, I'm just ran over my bag here. Draft motion for approval. The Dunstan Tap and Table. I move to approve the project titled Dunstan Tap and Table Building Edition, proposed by Dunstan Tap and Table, as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago Technics, dated 11 14 22, with the following findings and conditions. Findings The project amends the Dunstan Tap and Table site plan to include a 1,008 square foot addition to the rear of the existing restaurant. This would enclose a portion of the patio area currently used for seasonal outdoor seating. Waivers, number one, section 4D2, to permit a drive aisle width of 22.39 feet for potential 18 parking spaces at the northwest end of the site. Conditions, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall, A, address the comments of the staff memo dated 12-12-22, B, address the comments in the Haley Ward memo dated 12, excuse me, 11-29-22, 
C, address the comments in the traffic solutions memo dated 12-6-22. D, pay impact fees to be determined. E, revise the architectural elevation as discussed and at the 12-12-22 planning board meeting. Is there a second? I second it. Thank you, we have a second. Are there any comments, questions? Doreen, please call for the vote. Rachel Henderson? Yes. Roger Bealey? Yes. Jennifer Ladd? Yes. And Rick Mining? Yes. Thank you very Glenn much. Passes. We appreciate it. I just want to say that's, um, it just it strikes me as awesome because uh, here's a business that um, is growing in in Maine and in this uh, you know the Great America neighborhood that was once the plan and it it's just awesome to see success growing in in Scarborough. So congratulations on your growth. Number 12, item 12, none such development, LLC, request review of the fourth amended Mitchell Hill Heights subdivision. The proposal would further subdivide lot 50 of the approved subdivision into five additional lots along Martell Way. The property is further identified as assessor's map R09, lot 650. Eric. Thank you. So none such development LLC is requesting to amend the uh, the fourth to have a review of the fourth amended Mitchell Hill Heights subdivision, uh, which would further divide lot 50 into five uh, lots as Rachel had mentioned. Um, this will require the applicant to request a waiver uh, from the planning board for zoning ordinance section 9.I.4G which sets the maximum total lot served by a private way to six, since this would serve seven plus uh, a remaining land uh, lot. So it'd be seven or eight. Um, the, uh, without that waiver, the road would be required to be built to town standards. Staff's main concerns revolve around the provision of HOA documentation to address maintenance and repair of the roadway uh, as and stormwater infrastructure and reduction of the uh, hammerhead turnaround to avoid to minimize wetland impacts, uh, as well as provision of applicable state and federal permitting. Um, earlier this afternoon, we went through the previous subdivision approvals. Um, hopefully this is relatively straightforward, but uh, if if it, it's not too clear, I'm happy to answer questions. So basically in short, uh, the original subdivision was approved uh, in two phases. The first phase, which was closer to Mitchell Hill Road and 14 lots, which is shown in that red area, um, sort of at the top of the screen. That was approved in 2003. Uh, phase two uh, was approved uh, as a conservation slash cluster subdivision in uh, late 2004. Um, before that second phase approval, the first phase was amended, um, I believe in February of 2004. Um, there was a second amendment, which re uh, revised some building setbacks for one lot. Uh, which was approved in 2008, followed by the most current plan, uh, the third amended subdivision, which added land to lots 50 and 51, which is the area shown in blue. Um, and then I attempted to show the proposed five lots in dashed red lines. Um, those are very rough, I should note, uh, not exact, but just sort of to give the board a general scheme of uh, how the subdivision has progressed over time. Um, and with that, I would turn it back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you, and for the applicant. Thank you, good evening. Uh, my name is Matthew Orr, I'm a civil engineer at Sebago Technics, and I'm here on behalf of Nonsuch Development, LLC. Um, as Eric mentioned, this was a previously amended and approved subdivision by the third amended uh, subdivision as received approval in 2011. Uh, we are looking for the fourth amended to further subdivide uh, lot 50 into five single family house lots as, lo as well as extending the private way known as Martell Way, uh, approximately 700 linear feet. Um, this subdivision was previously approved within the uh, conservation cluster standards for the town of Scarborough. Um, <clears throat> as far as what the applicant is proposing, we're looking at extending the uh, roadway, as I mentioned, and 
than selling off the lots individually. So they will not be responsible for the actual build out of the lots. Um, and along with that, the uh, recreational trail that exists on the northern side of Martell Way will also be extended um, as we show on our plan and then connect with the existing trail network um, to plan uh, southwest as shown on, on the screen. Uh, the lots will all be served by private on-site individual wells and septic systems. Uh, there is underground electric um, on the south side of Martel Way, which will be extended as part of the uh, road improvements. Um, as Eric did mention, uh, this project was previously approved as part of a Site Location of Development Act permit with the main DEP. And as such, we are filing an amendment to that um, SLOTA permit. Um, and with that, the new improvements to the roadway uh, as this portion will fall into the uh, linear portion of a project due to just the nature of the road being extended. So we will be responsible for treating and providing detention for the uh, stormwater runoff that will occur from the roadway. Um, and with that, we're proposing a couple different underdrain soil filters towards the frontages of the lots. And then in meeting the flooding standards for detention of runoff, we're uh, providing some smaller detention basins in the rear of the lots. Um, overall, it's as Eric mentioned, it's a fairly straightforward project. Um, and we have reviewed all of the staff comments and are not opposed to any of them at this time. Thank you. Thank you. This item is subject to public comment. I should point out that we have received uh, several communications, Lori Wiley, David Madden, Andrew Grant, and Grant's uh, submission was signed by, I believe, 12 of the uh, butters. Um, they will be in the record. This is a time for public comment. Is there anyone in the room? that would like to make a comment. If so, please come to the podium and give your name and address. And you have three minutes, please. Hi, um, my name is Lori Willie, and my address is 19 Fengler Road. And um, I don't have anything written, but I'm just here to ask the board to uphold the standard that we have um, had and our neighborhood for years and years, and that is the 80,000 square feet lot size. These are um, substantially smaller, and I believe it would affect the neighborhood um, overall, and it could also have impacts on the well system as well. And I think I think that was it. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone online? Thank you. Public period, public comment is over. Um, let me ask Eric some clarity. I believe the old standards for the conservation district, and this was this is a conservation district, uh, conservation subdivision. Before we called them conservation subdivisions, we called them what did we call them? Uh, cluster subdivision. That's a very common term used statewide. All right, cluster subdivisions. Um, what was the uh, standard for the lots? Uh, 50,000 square feet. And when did the, when did that standard, um, when was that standard imposed? Uh, under, under what subdivision, under what amendment, at, at what time? Uh, so that was as part of uh, the original uh, approval, but phase two, uh, which was approved at the end of 2004. So since 2004, anything built in that area uh, has been subject to the 50,000 square foot uh, lot size. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Um, let's turn this over to the board. Questions, observations? Um, Roger. 
Eric, that 50,000 was the minimum, is that correct? Uh, yes. Okay. And these these new, this seems to be the uh, bone of contention, I think, with the abutters, is the size of the lots. Um, so the new lots will be just above that 50,000 square foot. Yeah, I believe the smallest one is 54,000 and some change. Yeah. And what section now on these, um, these plans we have? I'm trying to figure out like, I'm trying to get clarification like Rachel. <laughs> um, the original Fengler was on, under the old criteria, right? Oh, it's like 80. Uh, so what, what do you mean by the original thing? Like the original Fengler road, phase one. So, yeah, so phase one, uh, all of the lots were over 80,000 square feet. Okay. And, and did it change with phase two or? Yes, phase two was approved uh, with this, um, uh, the space and bulk standards that are shown on the, on the screen right now. Okay, and that would be Freedom Road? Uh, that includes the area of Freedom Road, yes. Okay. It's uh, essentially only the um, first seven lots uh, on each side along um, uh, Fengler Road on that northern part closer to Mitchell Hill Road, outlined in red in the diagram on the screen. What do you mean? Those those are the those are the ones at fifty thousand, or those are the ones at eighty thousand? Oh, uh, excuse me. Yes. Yeah. So the those are the ones that were eighty thousand at the top of the screen in red, and basically phases two through five were approved as a cluster subdivision, um, which is shown in green. Basically, the entire about bottom two thirds, uh, which includes, I think it's about uh, 53 lots out of the 67 lot subdivision. And they they were approved at 50,000 or thereabouts? Yep, yep. And some of them are larger than that, but for, uh, for the most part, they all hover around uh, 50, 60,000 square feet. And refresh my memory again, those came in when? Uh, phases two through five, which was part of the original approval, uh, were approved by the planning board on December 29th, 2004. 2004, thank yep. you. Reclaiming my time. And I, <laughs> go, go ahead, Roger's reclaiming his time, but I, I, I'm getting more clarity as we go along, yeah, so it's a, it's a good use of time. Sure, um, and, and this, um, these new, this new lot, this lot 50, was part of the, it would have fallen into this revised minimum lot size. Yes, that's correct. So the third amendment actually added lots 50 and 51 as now shown on the plan. Okay. And now this fourth amendment would subdivide the Western portion of lot 51, uh, of lot 50 into five lots. Okay. It's sort of strange, it, it's one lot, but there's a lot in between. Um, yeah, say, yeah. yeah, so it's, it sort of looks like three lots, but it's really only two lots in that yeah, portion sure. with one and, being uh, and the new requirement has a 125 foot frontage requirement. That's that same requirement that was set in 2004. Okay. So, and then there's an easement involved to get one of these lots to that 125 feet foot frontage? Uh, yes, there will be acquisition of more land that was a part of the original uh, lot five, I believe it was. Where, what, which one would that be? Where would that be? Uh, it was at the the end of uh, Martell Way. So it was- oh, Lot 72? Um, I believe it was Lot 7. So, um, sorry, the lot that will be acquiring that land, yes, will be 72. Okay. The only I, other thing I, I noticed, I, I Googled the um, this whole site to get an idea. I've, I've actually been out there in the past, but not recently, lately. And I noticed uh, going in off of Fengler Road, I, I guess that, that's um, the Martell residence right there. Yes. There seems to be a, a looped road right there. Um, was on their property or further? Know. Probably is. 
Yeah, it's like a shared driveway. Yeah, you see it there? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's probably lot um, 650, uh, what is that? Six. Well, it, Christopher Martelli. Okay, it's just a loop driveway. Yeah, that's mine. Oh, that's you. Okay. <laughs> um, well, you know, I I can I can sympathize with the uh, or empathize with the with the abutters, but I I don't see where the um, the applicant. You know. uh, it, it, excuse me. Um, I, I don't mind you making a comment, but uh, it would be very helpful if you could come up here and speak into the mic because we are a hybrid and it is going out over Zoom, so folks can't hear you and he can't hear what you're saying when you when you're back there. So uh, appreciate it if you could come up. Um, Rachel, just you know, to um, Wally Fangler has his hand raised. Uh, the original developer. Mm. Um, you just uh, <laughs> let me uh, ask Roger to finish his questions, okay. and then we'll ask Wally to uh, make a statement if he has one. I mean, you know, if if it hasn't been responded to, uh, Roger's questions haven't I, I, been responded I guess, to. I guess I'm all set. I I, I just empathize with the others, but the fact is, I don't see where there's any. You know, the applicant doesn't have any. Um, I mean, can't go go ahead with this. This uh, development. So that's all I have. Thank you. Um, can you uh, promote Wally so he can be on the screen, please? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, I just want to, to add to this that when you went to the cluster development, I gave the town of Scarborough 66 acres along the Nonsuch River and up Carter Brook and another brook, as well as the site where the woolly mammoth was found, which was another seven acres. So uh, there's a lot of public recreational benefits. And my son and I gave a trail easement that starts at the corner of Mitchell Hill and Holmes Road, goes over his land, goes behind uh, phase two through five, crosses over and connects with Martell Way and goes all the way down to the Nonsuch River where there's a beautiful bridge that crosses over to the Fuller Farm. So um, I just add that in because uh, there was a benefit to the cluster development. Thank you, Wally. Uh, Jen. Um, for my own clarity, but maybe also in response to some of the comments that we heard from the public, Eric, can you just clarify again which standard applies to the lots that are before us in terms of their sizing? So do they, are they meeting the standard that, that applies in this case? And I understand that over the... Um, over space and time here, we've had a couple of different um, criteria apply. Yeah, so uh, this project does meet the um, the standards of the subdivision that was originally approved back in 2003 and 2004, which is the 50,000 square 50, foot lot size minimum. So. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that's really my only question. Are there any questions? Or other comments? Uh, no, at this point, public the public comment period is closed. Um, at some point, if there is a question that the board has that somebody uh, who is not standing there can answer, um, we will we will go with uh, the expertise from the field. Rick, uh, I don't have anything now that the discussions that we had. Thank you. Um, I, this this was kind of difficult for me because I, I got caught up in what happened before what's happening now, but I think this hearing has has clarified that what we have left uh, 
in a sense is now what the staff memo and the various uh, memos from Haley Ward and did we get traffic memo? Yes. Yep, traffic solutions. Traffic solutions. So let me let me go uh, back to the applicant. And do you have any questions or issues with the items that are left that the staff has brought up that needs to be done before this can be approved? Um, no, I think the biggest one is just the granting of the waiver that we requested to maintain status of a private road. Um, and with that, we would uh, most likely look to move the um, end of the hammerhead turnaround to be the access of the uh, last driveway on the what's being proposed, so lot 72. Um, and with that, we would pull that road about 60 feet to the east and have less impact on all that wetland and remaining land. Um, all right, thank you. Um, <clears throat> we do not have uh, we do not have a draft motion tonight. This is not quite ready for that, but um, I have every confidence that you can respond to the issues. Uh, let me ask the board just to do a not an official vote, but just to do a general um, sense of the board. Uh, the waiver request is for the road width and the road crown. Um, are there any concerns about those waivers? Because without them, the basically we're saying to the applicant, go back and redesign everything, which is our, within our ability to do. But um, I think we owe it to the applicant to provide some uh, advice on this. Jen? Did, we, did I read that we're, we require even private ways to be constructed to town standards for accessing lots over a certain, uh, above a certain number of lots? Yeah, if it's uh, six lots is that threshold number. Okay. Yep. And so is that what you're seeking a waiver from here? Correct. And then with that, it would be uh, the design standards would be changed. So typically there's a crown crown roadway and 22 foot width. Um, if we maintain the private road status, we'd like to maintain the 20 foot width as it exists. So we'd be just extending Martell as it as it the road width is today. Um, and then the reason for having the road super elevated rather than crowned is just primarily for the collection of that storm water and having uh, less impact on land outside of the right of way and the uh, further impacts on uh, the surrounding wetland areas. And remind me again, I don't, I'm looking at the comments, not the plans. It's super elevated in which direction towards these lots or away towards from the, them? towards the proposed lots. Correct. Okay. Um, I have a lot of experience with private ways way after the fact trying to become public roads and it's very difficult when they're not built to town standards. Um, so I, I, I'm not necessarily in favor of that waiver. Thank you. Madam Chair, can I add, um, we did go Certainly. out on site and one of the reasons I think that the request for the private way to remain there is an entry feature and a split rail fence and a trail on um, along that private way. We have staff, I think, completely agrees with your point and we've uh, added some language to their maintenance agreement that it does not, will not, cannot ever be accepted okay. as constructed, um, trying to appreciate what they're asking for, but also trying to protect the town. Sure. So I did wanna just mention that we put that in here. Yeah, it's helpful. Yeah, and I think we can go through that a little more too, just because, um, Part of our conversation with the applicant for the design team was um, they would have to actually upgrade the existing Martell way does not meet. So in the order rest to get a public doesn't. street, they're going to have to go all the all way back. back. Okay. Um, and that was part of the, the issues with light, like you said, lighting, utilities, the trail. There's lots of different things that are in the way um, that you'd have to then blow it out into a public road standard. So um, really there's not a lot other than I will say when it was built, it was built to standard as far as the cross section, the gra I think there's plenty of gravel and things like that. Um, 
more what the engineers would consider. It's it's probably closer, but um, all the other amenities not close. So that's why um, we would have to really put a lot of notation on the recorded subdivision and um, they'd have to rebuild all the way back to the main public street for any kind of- Is the rest of the road to, up to this point also super elevated? Uh, no, it is, it's crowned currently. So there would be a transition at, at the beginning. Okay. That's the one that, that one's just really hard to overcome down the road. Um, and it might not, you know, wouldn't, it might not be in any of our 10 years, but um, even with a bunch of notes, you know, I don't know. It's just when you have that many voices, it too. can get lost over uh, a period of years. Um, however, I, 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 the fact that the rest of the road isn't already built to town standards so that you know if someone were I, I think that kind of changes the context for in my opinion a little bit um because if someone were to come in the future and want this piece plowed, plowed this is my experience how come the town doesn't plow the road in front of my house um or any number of other public services that we don't provide on roads that aren't public um but that's a much bigger that's a much bigger lift I think if the rest of it uh, would also need to be brought up to standard. So that context is helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Roger. Yeah, to go along with what uh, Jen was just saying, you had mentioned that uh, the lots would be developed individually by whoever purchased them. Correct. And would this, this language would be in any kind of a, a sale so that the person buying the lot would understand the situation regarding the road correct they'd they'd be purchasing into the the maintenance of the the private way okay yes so there shouldn't be any surprise to anybody who buys a lot and builds something there that okay i, I would surely hope not uh, uh, I, even with you know six pages of um warnings there still will be surprised to somebody <clears throat> Yeah. But let's hope it's not a surprise to the town. So I yeah, would, well, I that's, would, that would be my hope. I would encourage that language be included in the next pass, so that we, um, I'd be more comfortable in in providing the waiver if we actually had that language already uh, developed in in the package. Thank you. Um, I also would be more comfortable, uh, or or simply comfortable with the waiver, um, if there was clarity for the purchasers okay so totally unrelated. uh okay roger says he has a question yeah um just just for the for the purpose of uh clarifying everything for the current homeowners in that area um i'm reading in the um uh, in your narrative that the um the recorded subdivision plan uh, shows a total of 67 lots proposed out of 112 lots. The proposed project will increase the total number of lots within the subdivision subdivision to 72, remaining uh, below the total number of lots allowed. So all future lots that may be developed of the remaining lots will fall into the same category. Is that correct? Yeah, so I think uh, that specific uh, note was uh, more related to the net residential density calculation. Okay. Um, so that 112 figure would be what would allow, what would be allowed total for the subdivision. Okay. And the applicant just showing that uh, this is under that total figure um, at, at 72 lots proposed. Okay. But only five that aren't currently existing. Okay. Okay. Or five that are before us. Yeah, yeah that's correct. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Nothing else? From the board, um, I think I think. Madam Chair, okay. I'm sorry. Can we add one more point of clarification? Um, just to add a note to the actual subdivision plan, that planning board approval would be required for any public street in the future. Even more clarification than what we already have in the maintenance agreement. Uh, I think that would be appropriate. Is that I I I see a lot of up and down nods instead of this from the the crowd. Um, all right, thank you. Do you, you have a sense of what you need to bring back to us? Yes. 
Thank you very much. See See you again. Next item on the agenda is growth management ordinance questionnaire and responses. Um, This has come before committees and committee chairs uh, for the last couple of weeks. Um, Right now, the only person on this board who has maybe not had a chance to see this is Jen. Have you seen? No, she's seen with transportation. Yeah. You have seen, so we have all seen it. Yeah. Uh, is there? So our voices have been heard elsewhere. Is there anything that comments that somebody would like to make that very specifically uh, addresses the issues before the planning board? Well, Roger. Um, yes, I would just like to. I was looking at the um, exemptions, and this is maybe. Well, you're on the long range. Did this come out of your thing? Your, the long range planning? You know, this was uh, this oh, was this it's for, the from the town council. John Anderson and Nick McGee. Yeah, okay. Uh, were asked to um, re- review. I, I was looking at the exemptions, and the um, it says all affordable housing units are exempt, and then it says up to ten workforce housing units per year. Um, and it got me thinking that ten is not that many. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of workers out there who would like to live in town. <laughs> and uh, and I was just, um, it, are, there, are there further cl- clarifications or guidelines pertaining to those two categories? Like oh, and affordable housing, that's based on a formula, right? That's a Yes, state. it's 80% of okay. the median income. Yes, or something? Okay. and then the workforce is 120%. Okay. So, and the 10, there's a bit of a compromise story behind it, but I've seen that in several committees that the 10 limit (laughs) didn't necessarily um, continue to make sense. I see when I, when I think of this town, I, there's, there's certainly some people who could take advantage of affordable housing. And, and actually we've, I think we've done quite a bit of development in the last 20 years especially for on the senior side regarding that. But, you know, regarding workforce, that's a totally different situation. And I think that should, we, that's an area that I think the town really should be, you know, encouraging and incentivizing developers to focus on um, if we can. Okay. Um, so I have, we have reviewed this also at the transportation committee level and, um, had some really good discussion around that. And I won't reiterate, um, all of that, but I will just make a couple of other points because I think that they're relevant to the planning process here. Um, one is that to the extent it's appropriate, and I'm not sure what that is, um, I think in some ways it would be helpful as a member of this board to know where the town is at overall. And I'm I'm talking like very high level in terms of um, new residential units. And yes, we, (laughs) these are all coming across our desk, but we're not necessarily, we're sort of like further up in the pipeline, I think. And um, so I, I don't know uh, I don't necessarily know how many of those are coming online when, and um, that's what I mean. Like maybe it's not a pro- maybe we don't always need a full circle update on what that looks like. But I mention it because I think, um, as as would I if I were not a member of this board. I, you know, I think there's a common thought that the the planning board keeps approving residential units <laughs> and they're. Um, you know, the, the crossroads that I sit at, a lot of people feel like that results in a lot of extra traffic. And um, there's a lot packed into that. But um, I think it would be helpful to know, you know, maybe it's not even just for us, maybe it's for the, the public, the greater public. And this is maybe, again, more appropriate for the council, but to just sort of know like where we're at. And, and the example I'm kind of thinking of 
Um, you know, again, a larger scale is the scorecard system mm -hmm. yeah. that we use with the downs. That's been incredibly helpful over a, kind of a long period of time at this point for us to just have like a running score, uh, running a, a, a simple, easy place to go and look and say like, oh, here, that's where we're at. That's right. Um, and so again, like to the extent it's appropriate, I don't know that we need a full update every single time, um, but this also, um, I think this is relevant to elements of uh, transportation. Um, again, you know, in my opinion, because we don't know, you know, we're continuing to approve trips uh, 10 here at this intersection, 25 over here at this intersection. But what we don't always know, and we're not always able to keep at the forefront is what the baseline level of those intersections are. And um, again, this keeps coming up too. This is something that our townwide um, transportation master plan will hopefully help us with sort of a pinpoint assessment on um, but just in terms of growth and how people here feel growth, it seems like um, we we all are sort of feeling that in a couple of ways, but traffic is definitely a big one. Um, and so if we were able to, to, to keep ourselves informed um, and there was a way to keep the public sort of informed about um, just what that looks like on a rolling or some sort of regular basis, I think that, that might be helpful, um, at least for me. Um, without having to attend all the council meetings and tally up how many um, <laughs> permits they're issuing. Uh, and then the other thing, there's a, a couple of questions in here about, see if I can find it. Um, you know, does the number of, does words to the effect, uh, does, does the number of units approved have an impact on your board? Um, and again, from a from a traffic standpoint, and we talked about this in much greater depth transportation, so I won't go over it, but um, I think from that angle, actually the location of those units has the potential to have a much greater impact than, than perhaps um, the number, because I think there are certain areas of our community where we can absorb more units. So I think the example we talked about at transportation was if you add, you know, 50 units out in West Scarborough where there is not a lot of density, the next nearest intersections to that and the, the immediate neighbors are going to feel that growth more, more prominently than if you were to put 50 units in the middle of a development that is otherwise 150 units. Um, and so that's kind of something that I'll be, um, you know, we have some opportunities to see that com coming forward, um, continuing to come forward through the downs and some of our other denser developments. And so um, that's one, one I really appreciated the inclusion of that comment in this questionnaire and something that I'll be looking forward, looking for as we move forward. Thank you. Rick? Um, yeah, we talked about this in the sustainability committee, so um, I won't rehash that. Uh, from the standpoint um, of this board, um, I, I don't really have any any other thoughts. Um, I, I think that's a good one. The scorecard has been helpful in the guidance so that we kind of have a sense of of where we are. Um, and, and then, you know, when it comes time, new year, okay, now we go back and now we have these opportunities. So that would be helpful, but uh, I don't think I have any more uh, substantive comments to make other than what we talked about in the sustainability committee. Roger. Yeah, I I just like to add on uh, to what Jen was saying when, uh, and it pertains to um, uh, question number one, um, number one, on on this questionnaire, and um, when I think it's important that the public understands that when we look at a new development, for instance, the one we're looking at right tonight, um, it has to abide by our uh, zoning and our ordinances. And then it goes through peer review, traffic peer review. And then if it's a really significant project, it has to go through main DOT possibly. And, you know, a myriad of um, regulatory, it's, we just don't pass judgment and say, oh, we like 
25 new homes here, you know, and that's it, not worry about it. So, um, and the only other thing I would say on, on this whole questionnaire, um, I think it's important that it, for, as an example, um, apartment complexes, I think there's been a belief out there in the public that apartments create a lot of children in the school system. And it's, I think it's my understanding that there's actually some analysis being done on that right now. And I think that would be, <clears throat> something like that would be important to get out there to the public. So when they do see a complex before us for some reason, that they just don't automatically, their default position is, oh, there's 100 new kids in the school system or something like that. Um, you know, facts, uh, any facts or data that, that can be presented to the public. Whether they'll accept it or not, that's another story. <laughs> but just uh, just to clarify anything we can do. Thank you. Um, I'm going to echo what my colleagues have been saying. I, I, I think that um, some of the issues surrounding growth in the town um, is, is a perception on people's part that there is no way to rein it in or that we're doing nothing to rein it in um, and that it, it is much more massive uh, than it actually is, uh, whether it's the schools and impact on the schools or impact on transportation. To the extent that the planning department can develop a scorecard that goes up on its, on its site uh, so that people can see impact um, some people will take a hard look at that. Some people will still have the perception that it, that it's out of control. Uh, they also have uh, the perception out there that the planning board uh, has something to do with it without understanding that our, our role really is to enforce the ordinances. And if somebody comes before us with a project that meets all of the ordinances, that's our responsibility to say that. It is not our responsibility then to say, and we're going to give you X number of growth permits. We don't do that. That's that's not our job. Um, so the more information out there, the more some of the, I, I think some of the unease and the concerns uh, will will go down a bit. The um, <clears throat> To Roger's point on the 10 workforce housing units per year, um, Technically, somebody could apply for a 48 apartment unit with um, all of them workforce housing mm -hmm. because there are other uh, permits available. There are a total of 144 uh, or up to 289 uh, in, the, um, in the crossroads. But all that does is create a, sort of a a nod and a wink that we're going to put up workforce housings if all we're saying is 10 is 10 is what you got uh so i think incentives to developers to build workforce housing need to be a little richer than 10. i don't know what the number is but i think it needs to be richer uh, and more enticing than saying you can get another 10 units going up um, the exemption process, I think we, we need to have it. I'm, my basic concern is simply to ensure that it's really clear what it's based on, uh, whatever it is, that it is quite clear. Uh, and we constantly have difficulty identifying a public benefit. I think sometimes as we're looking at uh, our projects, we tend to end up just kind of saying, well, a trail is a public benefit. And we're not entirely sure if there's other public benefits, but what comes before us most is the open space, the meeting places that we can ask for and, and the trails. Uh, and I do think those are important, important public benefits, creating access for all of our citizens to enjoy an opportunity to walk through the woodlands uh, to take advantage of putting down a blanket and having a picnic in a public space. I think that is a, that is a public benefit that as I look at it and as I look at uh, what comes before us. 
Do you think it got enough from us? And Jen has a um, just, question. Just on that, if um, anyone's listening, council or whoever is collecting and reading through all of these surveys, um, I think that uh, this board would benefit greatly to, to Rachel's point um, to uh, to read those to read those results. So, what do our other committees think? Um, public benefit means to them because you're right. Um, maybe we're presented with something as a public benefit, but but that's the applicant's interpretation of public benefit. And so, if our committees have each individually taken a look at this and have answers to this question, um, you know, I think that would be really helpful um, for us to understand. I think that's way through this, the question. This board, yeah, question. that's great. It's a great question. It is hard. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard for this board, yeah. and I know it's hard for uh, the council okay. and everyone else. Can I ask a follow-up question to the exemption process? Does the planning board see themselves? involved in the future in any part of an exemption process say um just if the if the council were to adopt an ordinance that said we had i'm just making up things for everybody say we had 50 extra reserve permits the planning board has to approve them based on meeting 10 public benefit points would that be something that you think the planning board would be able to administer if it was clearly defined or do you think um you don't want to have any part of it. I like black and white. Okay. From our standpoint. Right. Yeah, I would I would have to see what it looks like. I, yeah, because I, I that makes me a little queasy. Okay. I, w I would also say, I think from a developer's point of view or whoever's, you know, they want, they want. Um, Even playing field. They, they, well, they want to know what to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they want certainty. So they're going to start spending money on permitting and all this other engineering and all this other stuff they want to have some certainty not to end up before us and be like well I really like this you know <clears throat> so you know when I when I answered that when I thought about that question as it pertained to this board <clears throat> and what we do I think the important thing is diversity of the housing stock you know based on on the on the, <clears throat> the pocket and the needs and and I I think we've seen that just in some of the large projects in in this town, how they've gone from condos to rentals, because that's what all of a sudden the market has changed to reflect that, you know. But I think the important thing is 20 years ago, we we had hardly any apartments. I mean, everything was single family apartments. Now I'm sure that many citizens will say we have too many apartments. <laughs> but it's it's the trouble is we have we don't have enough of affordable apartments, you know, for the for the people who work in this town. Yeah, I'd like to follow um, what Roger said. And exemptions tend to make me a little queasy because they they lay themselves open to the thought that somehow or other there's favoritism involved, that maybe something went on behind the scenes that nobody knows about, and this developer gets something, and this developer get, doesn't. So any process that concerns exemptions has got to be extremely clear. And if, if it comes at all to us extremely clear that the process by which we determine something is extremely tra transparent uh, and as open as possible. And I think we're done. Do you have enough, Autumn? I think so. For number eight, I'm going to answer it. That is what you all are looking for as a planning board, that it meets our ordinances and our subdivision regulations. Those are your rule books. That's your yeah, number. We, we, we need guidance. We need clear guidance. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, staff report. Uh, so the next meeting will be January 9th, 2023. Um, I believe everybody's also already been provided copies of the 2023 schedule. Um, the Costco building permit has been issued um, and plans received for the Hackmore Apartments to uh, garage and foundation permits. I believe the building permits for those may have come in today or they'll be coming in shortly. Um, the Sustainability Committee uh, staff is working to develop some standards for fuel cell development, which the committee has 
uh, been considering uh, and reviewed at it, its uh, December meeting. Um, and the election of officers will be held at the January meeting. Thank you. Administrative amendment report. None at this time. Minor development reviews. None at this time. Correspondence. None. Okay, planning board comments. I'm going to go first on this. It's not something I usually do. Um, this may be, it's very likely my last meeting. Uh, I had the planning board, the zoning board of appeals and the town council all have term limits. They are three full terms. This last August, uh, the negotiation, appointment and negotiations committee determined to ask all reappoint people up for reappointment to complete a full application uh, for for their current uh, for a renewal of their current appointment i did that um on uh, december 5th something occurred uh, i'm going to read you a statement that i read to the town council I am at the end of my second full term on the Scarborough Planning Board and I had hoped to continue for one final term. At the December 5th appointments committee, statements were made about my tenure and behavior that were categorically false. They impugned my integrity. A council member announced that I had met with developers. I never have. The council indicated that they had learned that from me. They had not. In reference to how I worked as chair, they accused me of knowing too much. It's difficult to respond to that other than to say that I do my homework, my due diligence, and bring an institutional memory to the board concerning prior applications. In the case of the meeting they referenced as an example of their contention that I did not run effective meetings, I was eliciting information about concerns a member of the public had brought to us. The accusations of the counselor are inaccurate and without merit. I've worked all of my professional career on nonprofit boards as staff and as a member. I have never before this been accused of dereliction of my office, of misfeasance, or of a violation of my oath of office. I have served this community every year since I moved to Scarborough. I was brought up believing in the ethic of giving back for all that this nation has given me. That is what I've been doing in Scarborough. To repeat, in all of the years I have served on the planning board, I have never engaged in ex parte discussions with any applicant. I am deeply offended and deeply saddened. My application to return has been tabled. Uh, it will be taken up again, I believe, uh, this Wednesday. I have no idea if I'm coming back. I would like to express my appreciation for the people who have served with me on this board. Thank you all. Rick? Um, yeah, well, I certainly am kind of shocked um but i'm also not shocked because i too this could be my last meeting um as it was brought up during the uh appropriate or the nomination committee or whatever <clears throat> sorry i'm not recalling the exact name of the appro the appointments and negotiation committee there it comes out um they're looking for new blood for this board and uh so they're i'm on the i was mentioned as you know not i talk a lot about evs i guess uh but quite possibly this could be my last meeting as well uh and it's been a pleasure serving with you all um i i feel good about what we do here i feel good of what i have tried to do um like rachel um i feel like if I'm going to live in this community, I want to be part of a solution and not a part of the problem. And so I've tried to do that. Um, this is my, f uh, I am finishing my first term on this board. I was on as an alternate for a year, uh, filling in for a vacant position. So this is really after three years of, of service. Um, but that's where it stands with me at this juncture. Thank you. Um, I, I'm disappointed to hear of this. Um, I've, um, I may, I recall many, many years ago, there was a, um, 
a member of the uh, long range planning committee who was some some citizens took issue with um his performance and i remember i was one of the just a regular citizen who went to the appointments committee at that time <clears throat> and vouched for the person's integrity and and honesty and 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 what they were doing and you know when it's it's hard to get people to serve on um community committees and when people are making accusations i think it's incumbent upon them to be absolutely accurate because you are impugning a person's character and um um, it it and it, it sends a message to others out there. You know, do I want to do this? Because somebody could say something uh, without any basis of facts, and um, it has an effect. Um, I I know it does. So um, I I hope this gets resolved, and I hope you're both able to um, return. Okay. If anybody would like to see the appointments committee, uh, December 5th, it's on YouTube. So it, it is out there for the world, what was said. I, I do have a regular comment, but. <laughs> go, go, I, and I have one, I do have one more comment. Um, if if you are a, a nerd, uh, which I frequently am, uh, who likes to look at legislation and rules to make sure that we're following them, um, the new location for information on what a municipal reviewing committee, I think that's the name, does, um, is on Title 31-A. It used to be on Title 30. I panicked when I did a search for planning board on the state, on the state statutes and couldn't find it. Um, it is a municipal reviewing committee and it, uh, was changed from planning board in 1971. Um, so if you wanna know what we're supposed to be doing according to the state, that's that's where you can find the information. Well, that explains why I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, I did have a question for Eric. Um, I noticed on the, um, at the downs, um, I know they were building the road coming in from the parkway to the bridge but are they also constructing a road from the Downs to the bridge, the Downs Road? Uh, my understanding from that subdivision and master plan review was that they're not constructing that at this point. Okay. It's just they, they constructed the road entry from Hygis and the bridge, and then um, it would be connected um, to the town center when that starts okay. to be, become built out. Okay, because I saw equipment up there that looked like it was road excavation type of equipment. You know? Yeah, in, in order to, uh, in order to um, to build the bridge over Mill Creek, uh, they had only a certain amount of time to do oh, it. Yes. Okay, yeah. so so that was it, and then we cut it off. They should come before this board uh, when they're ready to complete yeah. it. Yeah. If there's nothing else, motion to adjourn. So moved. Happy holidays. Uh, all in favor of adjournment. Thank you. Meetings adjourned. <laughs>